Hey, I am Miranda Sullivan in Nashville, Tennessee, and I came across Utaptics Faster EFT actually one year ago last week. I'm celebrating my one year anniversary. And in that time, I was able to, using the this modality, I was able to get off 16 years of anti-anxiety medication, healed the PTSD, insomnia, and a lifelong experience of off and on depression. So I'm excited to talk to the creator of Faster EFT Utaptics and just talk about what the benefits are, how it works, and how it can benefit people. Oh, how you doing, uh, Miranda? I'm good to be here. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to have this time with you. This is Robert Jean Smith in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, the great state of Oklahoma, where you're okay. Yes. <laughs> the birthplace of Utaptics Faster of T, which is a system that will help give you control in your life. It shows you how the mind works and show you how to use your whole mind to create something better in your life. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely did for me. So one of the reasons why I met you is because my son had passed away 18 years ago. And I was, even though I understood it, I felt like it was his time to leave. I was having a hard time dealing with it and dealing with life. And I really didn't know, understand what was bothering me. But it was actually, you know, finding him passed away and I came to Oklahoma to a grief workshop and you worked on me. So can you tell, tell me a little bit more about memories and how updating them changes things in someone's life? Well, you know, you know, because I started, I started working on myself when I was 15 years old, you know, um, and the reason is I started working on myself is when I was 15, I moved in with my grandmother. I had these horrible nightmares and it was, you know, it was a major change in my life because I'm moving from uh, a very functioning dysfunctional family, which means it worked within the system. But when I left, I, I had a lot of, you know, home trauma experiences and, and um, I was trying to figure out how to solve this in my mind. And so that has been one of my passions is to work on me. So my life gets better. And of course, from that, you know, you know, I still had a lot of experiences or unpleasant experiences growing up and getting married. My wife said she was abused as a child. And of course, when you're 22, you don't know what to do with that either. Plus, I had my own to deal with, much less hers. So my path has been, has led me to learn about how I work, how the mind works, and how to prove the quality of my life. And of course, the life I have today is nothing like I could ever imagine. But it started with one, one really good, important thing. And that is, I persistently kept trying to find a way. And that's one of the things that is very common when people come to see me. I've tried everything, nothing's worked. I'll try another one. So how does memories work? And why is it that my life is better today than what it was five years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago? you know, 50 years ago. And it, it's basically because life is determined by how we captured the world growing up. That means as a child, you know, I just worked with an individual and, you know, he was, he was the youngest. His two older brothers beat him up, punched him, said mean things to him. You know, if he was watching TV, they would turn it and change it. If he's playing a game, they'd take it from him. And so he was picked on and bullied all his life. And today now he's an older man but guess what? He's still acting like the little kid is being picked on. He's picked on at work, et cetera. So memories ha has plays a role in our survival. And so from our childhood all the way up to now, the brain will replicate what the mind has captured. So, so learning how to update memories, and that, that's really important because, again, a lot of people say, well, I don't want to change my memory. Who will I be? I said, you'll be you. You'll be happier, healthier. You won't let things bother you as much because again, it's how the mind works. And some people, you know, they, you know, they say, well, why am I so screwed up? I said, you're not screwed up. You just think you're screwed up because you hadn't figured out how to let go change and transform memories that hurt you control you. And somebody said, I don't ever think about those memories. I said, do you ever think about setting in kindergarten or first grade learning how to write the alphabet when you start writing stuff? The answer is no. 
because it is driving your life because it started there. It gave you an attitude, a perception, a value, and then your brain just starts building on top of it. And we have a tendency to recycle these experiences, not consciously. Because I always say that the unconscious is the first green machine, which means it keeps recycling our experiences. You keep dating the same type of person. You keep feeling the same types of feelings. You keep rehearsing, replaying, and building on top of what you already have. So memories are very, believe it or not, very uh, uh, plastic. They're very adjustable. But we can, you know, people will take a good memory and make it bad, and they can take a bad memory and make it worse. And sometimes they don't even know they do it. They honestly don't know how to do it, which reminds me when I was uh, Stephanie's birthday, I think it's like her 60th birthday. And um, this big, tall German guy, he goes, um, I don't introduce himself. And he goes, well, what do you do? And I say, I, I'm a behavioral engineer, a neuroplastician, and I help people change their bad memories, knock strokes off their golf game, and improve the quality of your life. He goes, you can't change memories. I said, you can't. I can. So we're sitting there at the dinner table. We've just finished eating and we're talking. And he goes, you know, I have a memory when I was 15 years old. And I've been, you know, he's a, he's a German. He's from Germany and he's 15 years old. And he, he said, when I was 15 years old, I saw a guy riding a motorcycle and he got decapitated. All right. And I go, okay, that's interesting. I said, um, um, so if you don't mind, can I ask you a few questions? He goes, uh, yeah, of course. I said, let me ask you, and when you remember this memory in your mind, as you recall it, what do you see? He goes, well, when I remember it, I see me, I see the motorcycle guy, and I see it happen in front of me. I said, interesting. I said, um, is it in color? Is it, in, is it black and white? Is it close? Is it far away? He said, well, it's uh, kind of grayish. I said, was it at night? He goes, no, it's in full daylight. I said, I don't know if you realize this, but that memory has already started to change and you didn't even know it. He goes, I said, think about it. You're watching it happen in front of you, in your mind. You're watching it on the, on the movie screen of your mind. It never happened that way because you're looking at me. You're not watching you look at me. The brain has already started making adjustments. I said, oh, by the way, well, it was in daylight, not at night. The color faded from the image, the memory. Therefore, it's already started to change. Now, this is an unconscious occurrence that occurred to the memory without knowing it. And it's what the brain does naturally without our awareness that it does it. Now, if you are consciously aware and understand how memories work, that the, you know, in science, there's a great science out there now even though I've been changing memories for a long time, helping people update the memories, improve the quality of their memories. But science is now with the work of Daniela Sheeler, where they show in scientifically, they created a memory that is a painful memory, and then they go and change the painful memory with a blue square and with electric chalk. But the key that they're actually showing is that memories are, 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 are malleable. You can adjust it and change it. And some people even give you memories to you that aren't even yours. And you have what you call a false memory. We learn to have fears by watching a TV show or something was not even real. It was just on a screen. So again, understanding the, the principle of how the mind works. And then of course, you know, some people say, well, if I change my memory, um, what happens to the past? I said, well, first of all, you cannot change the past because it doesn't exist anymore. But you can change how you represent the past and however you hold the past here, your brain will reuse it on you again. I said, haven't you sit at the dinner table with your family or with friends and buddies and you all talk about an experience that you experienced and it's like five different stories and it's not the same story? Total different stories, total different uh, memories of it but yet they were five different people and it's all internally represented. So I say history is only as good as a storyteller mm -hmm. and it's how you hold it. Mm -hmm. so. Right, exactly. Well, and that's what's been pivotal for me in doing this work is I noticed that, you know, those, those yucky memory, those bad memories that I've held within my mind, there's so much more 
energized or, or so more apparent that it covers up the good times that we had. And once you let go of those, you can see things in a whole new way, in a different way. Because it's like, I'm realizing that I don't, don't think, I know that I, you know, experienced trauma when I was younger, but I, it's not as bad as I thought it was because all those yucky memories were the main things that I remembered. But in doing this work and shifting those yucky memories, I'm able to see the wonderful things that my dad did and how he did stay with my mother for so long and made sure us kids were taken care of. And, you know, just the type of man that he, more that he was than who I thought he was.